Hey everybody, I'm Howard, and this is Otter's Retirement Corner. Today, we're back at the whiteboard, I uh, wanted to talk about RMDs, or Required Minimum Distributions. And some people have been asking or talking about it in comments, uh, this topic. Uh, most recently, the viewer, Carrie Mason, I always want to say Perry Mason, but it's Carrie Mason, has requested uh, that we review this, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So again, required minimum distributions are the amount of your deferred tax retirement plans, most specifically 401ks and IRAs, that the government requires you to take so that they start collecting the taxes that you deferred when you were contributing to these plans. So until recently, and, and a lot of people still get this wrong, th those started at age 70. Uh, recent legislation changed that to 72, and now we're at the point where it's at 73, age 73. So for everybody right now who isn't already into the uh, distribution phase, you will be required to start taking money out of those plans when you're 73. Now that age is going to increase gradually up to age 75 by, I believe, 2032. So you've got some time. Um, so let's, let's talk about what those are. So these are amounts you're going to be forced, again, to take out, and under penalty if you don't take them out, uh, partial penalties is what it really is. So here, here is what you, most of you are looking at. When I say regular, most people will fall under these requirements. You can find this on dozens of sites. Uh, they'll give you a life expectancy factor. What you actually do is you take the number one and divide it by that factor and you'll get the percentages you're required to take. For some reason, they don't show percentages. So when you hit age 73, you're required to take out 3.77% of your nest egg, your IRA, your 401k. So if you have 100,000, you know, you're only taking out $3,770. It's, it's not a heavy burden. But it's really important, especially when you're not in retirement yet, that you understand these numbers and how they work because this becomes very important for tax planning. And there's ways to limit the amount of taxes you pay because everything you take out is now taxable income. Okay? So, you know, if you have a million dollars, you're taking out $37,700, and that's taxable income. And if you're on, you know, when you, when you hit 73, you're going to be on Social Security. You're going to have to account for that. So any other income will go into that. So this is going to be taxable. And it could be 10, 12, 22, 24% tax rate. You know, that's what you sort of have to look to. And you have to kind of plan for it. And I'll, I'll explain some planning later. Uh, so I gave just some representative ages, 73, 74, 75, the first few years. You know, it's not a lot. 4%, not a big deal. You know, as you get to 80, 85, you know, 90, now, now it's a big deal. So two things. Remember, not many people are going to live to that age. Many are, but not, not the majority of people. But you've been taking out money for, you know, in essence, decades. So when you hit this area, your balance is probably going to be fairly low. If you get to that age and your balance is high and you're forced to take that out and pay taxes on it, good for you. You know, if you have a million dollars, two million dollars, five million dollars when you hit that age and you're forced to take out hundreds of thousands of dollars, great, you've done well. All right, so here's the second table, and this is called Joint Life Expectancy Table. And what this table is for is people who have spouses who are 10 years or more younger than them. Yay, me! So, because my wife is, is more than 10 years younger than I am, you, you get a slightly lower amount. It's not a big deal. It's not a huge deal. You see 377 to 367. You know, up here it's about a quarter percent. It's not a, it's not a big deal. I, it is what it is. You know, they look more at, at what your joint life expectancies are, as the title suggests. Um, now, here, here's some particulars. You, you apply this to the balance at the end of the year, you, you, you take the, or the prior year. So if you're taking it in April of this year because you're 73, you look at the balance of December 31st last year. 
and you apply that to the balance. So it's not a moving target. There's, there's one date you look at the balance. Um, now, the year you turn 73 and you have to start these, you can actually wait till the following year, till April 1st, to take your first one. The problem is you also have to take your second one for age 74 in that same calendar year. So again, you're going to get a tax buildup. Um, I, I don't want to get into too much of this. Um, let, me, let me go to one other rule. If you're still working at that age, sorry, or if you enjoy it, you know, good for you, and, and you're uh, contributing to a 401k, you don't have to start your RMDs until you retire. That's going to be extremely few people, so don't worry about that. Um, now, if, if you've inherited a Roth, I'm uh, sorry, if you've inherited a, an IRA or a 401k and you're a spouse, you can continue through these RMD plans. If you are a non-spouse, if your father or mother left you a plan or an uncle or an aunt or whatever, you have 10 years to take the money out. So it's a little different. Consult your tax professional. I'm not giving you tax advice here. Um, now, the penalty, if you fail to meet these amounts, is 25% of the amount you didn't take out. So if you were required to take out 40,000 and you took out 30,000, $10,000 is the amount you didn't take out that you were supposed to, and you'll get a 25% penalty, so you'll pay $2,500 in additional taxes. So there is a, you know, there's a penalty. Um, and again, for most people, this is not something so concerning that you have to worry about, oh, this huge tax burden, I'm going to take this money out. And here's, here's what I'm doing and some other people do. Again, I retired at 65 a couple years ago. I won't take my Social Security till I'm 70. So in those five intervening years, which is, I have three more years left, I'm taking money out of my IRA so that when I turn 73, my RMDs are lower. So right now I manage myself into a tax bracket I want based upon how much I control, I can take out whatever I want. I stop at that amount, pay taxes up to that tax bracket, and I don't go over it. So that when I turn 73 and I'm getting Social Security, and maybe my wife's getting Social Security, those amounts aren't so overwhelming that I move up to that next tax bracket. Now, if you're earning other money, you know, you have some passive income, you know, rentals, whatever it is, a pension, uh, whatever that money is, you may have to pay the taxes. <laughs> That's just the way it is. But again, you can manage it. And what I'm doing is managing it. So again, you, when you retire, you don't have to start Social Security, but you can start taking money out from your IRA or 401k. So be aware of this. It's not, for most people, an earth-shattering thing. These amounts you take out, you know, based upon the December 31st balance of the prior year, and, you know, live your life. Now, the one thing I don't want people to confuse is this being a detriment to the 4% rule or the 5% rule, whatever you're using. You know, you get here and you say, okay, I have to take out 6.25%. The 4% rule says, you know, I'll, my, my nest egg will last, but if I have to take out this much, my nest egg's not going to last. Well, keep in mind, the 4% rule is not a spending rule. It's a withdrawal rule, all right? So, you know, you can spend less than you take out, or you can take out less than 4%. And when you get here, you don't have to spend the 6.25% you're taking out. Take out your 6.25. If you're spending 3% of that, spend 3% of that. You know, no one's forcing you to spend this money, and you put this money in a taxable brokerage account. Okay, so you know if that's sixty-two thousand five hundred dollars, and you only need thirty, take the other thirty-two thousand five hundred, put it in your brokerage account. Yeah, you're going to pay taxes on whatever you invest in. You know whether it's dividends from stocks or interest from bonds or interest from a money market. You know whatever it is, it's a good problem. It's, it, it, if you have to take out more than you need, fine. All right, so let me know if you have any questions about this or you want more detail. It's kind of a simple thing. Don't be alarmed, but be aware, especially before you retire and especially before you hit that age, know what you're getting into, know what's coming. So as always, please subscribe if you like my content. Click the like if you like my content and comment. We're having some great comments, a huge number of comments. I'm thrilled. You know, there's negative comments. That's great. You know, 
Tell me what you think of me, good or bad. Tell me what you think of the topic, good or bad. And recommend, you know, this was a recommended topic. I want to talk about things that interest both of us, not just me, but you. So, see you on the other side. Thanks for watching. Bye.